what I mean? But these kids today, they can't relate to that. A lot of these younger kids can't can't relate to the Knicks in that regard, and the players neither. I understand that. You know what? He's pushed aside the beef with Dolan and now taking it to players that wear the same color uniform that he wore. How they paying homage to that? That man. is definitely what it is, man. It's, there's no way you can have five triple doubles in a row and be a slouch. That's yeah. just you just you just can't. Like that's not. That's fair. That's that's, that's, fair. that's like historic. All right, here we go. Back again in the studio. CP from Knicks Fan TV, my man JL is from the Nick of Time Show. You're back at it again, my dude. How you feeling, bro? I'm good, man. Tuesday. After work, yeah, man. <laughs> just stumbled upon the studio. Yeah, just, just happened to be here. Just something to talk <laughs> about, you know. There's always something to talk about. Man. Yeah, you know, I gotta get some stuff on my chest, CP. I mean, first of all, <laughs> last night the uh, reaction to a preseason, the first preseason game. Was crazy. Oh, hell yeah, man. I mean, look, obviously the Knicks are going to the championship after seeing us <laughs> <laughs> being on the Wizards. Yeah, so, of right. course, there would be some excitement about the win, you know? Brother, <laughs> yo, we had a cr we did crazy numbers last night for the postgame show. Oh, yeah, I, I seen Crazy numbers. Yeah, you were there. I was there. You were there. I'm I mean, there. for a preseason game, it was incredible. So, you know the, the, the fan base is charged up right now. Oh yeah, you know man. I mean? Yeah, we, we we fiending for basketball. We fiending for fiending Knicks for basketball. winning basketball. Yeah. And you know what? We we know where we're headed, and we feel like you know what? We are, we're kind we got, of we're cool we got right now. Realistic expectations. Yeah, we're realistic, realistic expectations. Ex expectations yeah. man. Mm. So so let's get into it. A couple things happened um, today mm -hmm. or, or, or Tuesday. Once the people that's watching this on Wednesday, the KD topic was interesting. Oh God! <laughs> All right. So KD went on Hot ninety seven with Ebro and them. Lord, Lord. Had some some interesting comments to say about the Knicks. I just wish we could really just put this thing to bed, man. And I think after tonight, it, we we got to put this to bed, man. What do you what do you think, man? First and foremost, I woke up this morning going to work with a uh, Hot ninety seven the Ebro in the morning on <laughs> and heard KD's voice and heard them talking about the Knicks and I immediately turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to know what he was saying. Because you knew, you knew that was going to be the first I question. I knew it was going to be some bull. first question. I knew yeah. it. I yeah. knew it. And then everything exploded. And I knew I couldn't avoid it. I couldn't avoid it. Read, read the quote, man. Read the quote what KD said and let's get into it. <sighs> All right, man. So KD basically came on the radio and said some bull. And this is what he said. <clears throat> I've seen the Knicks in the finals. But kids coming up after me didn't see that. That whole brand of the Knicks to them is not as cool as, let's say, Golden State Warriors or even the Lakers or the Nets right now. And the Nets right now is kind of what I want to concentrate <laughs> on, that statement. I mean, listen, I don't think he wasn't lying to me, though. But go ahead on, on your Nets wait, part. Wait, go uh, ahead. All right. Here's the thing. I understand yeah. that, you know, the Knicks take a beating in the media. Everybody knows the Knicks takes a beating in the media. Of course. Right? It sells. Controversy sells. Exactly. Man. But it's, it's, Controversies be are calling, it's, calling. it's because we are the Knicks. Of course. It's not because we're bad. It's because we're bad and we are the Knicks. People care about the Knicks. Yeah. No one cares about the Nets. I'm sorry. They don't. Sure. When the Nets were bad, no one cared. And that's why the perception that they're not cool isn't as projected as it is with the Knicks. Like, it's not like yeah. the Nets were winning over the last 10 years. Like, they won. They barely got to the playoffs last year. Congratulations to them. But, what, 2017, 2018, they had 28 wins. 2016, 2017, they had 20 wins. 2015, 2016, they had 21 wins. And then the year before that, they had 38 which, which wins. Which was the year that they had uh, KG and Paul Pierce. That was around. That was, like, when it first came. That was, like, 20, was like the 2012, 2012, I think. I think 2011, they were still in the New Jersey Nets. This is why if you listen to KLT show, I call them the Brooklyn Paint Jobs. Because, you know, <laughs> because Brooklyn just took them and painted over them. It's the same dirty team from yeah. before. It's gentrification all over again. Anyway, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> <laughs> so once they got there, they had like a little short stint. But it's not like the Nets have just been cool and winning the whole see, time. See, the thing with the, thing with the Nets that, that KD just jumped on it is because he went there. You know what I mean? Like the Nets weren't cool before that they still he, he threw them in there well listen they they got him and Kyrie I'll, I'll give them that you know what I mean yeah. from the outside looking in if that was my team I'd be all I'd be all in the streets just just talking shit bro right you know what I mean let's just keep it a book I think though I don't he's not lying though JL's in terms of 
These kids today, they don't know about our history. They don't know about the 90s Knicks, the Ewing Knicks, and most important, most importantly, they don't have that emotional connection that we had to that team. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we grew up with those teams. Of course. And and that's how we came into basketball, going up against Michael Jordan against the greatest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was that like hero villain angle. It could have played out like a movie. You know what I mean? But these kids today, they can't relate to that. Their parents can, or maybe their older brother or their older sister might be able to, but a lot of these younger kids can't can't relate to the Knicks in that regard, and the players neither. I understand that. You know what? It's a family thing, too. It's like a legacy thing. Cause it's a legacy thing. RJ, you know, his parents were, grew up in Brooklyn. Shout out to everybody in Brooklyn. I am from Brooklyn, even though I'm a Knicks fan. Yeah. And, you know, they, he, he, brought, he grew up in that Knicks legacy. Yo, this is John Starks, and this is, this is Patrick Hewen. These guys did their thing. So people in New York probably... A lot of people in New York who are still Knicks fans today probably still have that same feeling, that same reverence. Maybe people outside of New York don't have that. Yeah. But it's it's fine. And I get what KD is saying. I understand what he's saying because the Knicks do take a beating. We all watch TV. We all watch ESPN. Thanks. But he threw the Nets in there on the slide yeah, at that's the end. His team. And I'm like, he come on. The Nets aren't cool, man. That's, that's I don't care what you said. Yeah. When you said... The Knits ain't cool like Golden State. I, I could see that. The Knits ain't cool like what? What other team he said? He he said uh, he, he said Golden State. He said the Nets. And you, you got the quote there. Yeah, just, just pull I mean, quote up. he said Golden State, which I don't. Which is like, all right, cool, yes, Golden State, fine. But you can't throw the Nets in there all willy nilly and expect me not to. I mean, like, like, I don't. I don't blame <laughs> him, man. That that's his team. He's right. Listen, in the last twenty years, we have five winning seasons, bro. We we've been dog shit. Like, let's just keep it a buck. Mm -hmm. And over that time, these players that's coming up, they don't like I said, the history becomes less and less relevant. To I feel you. As time goes by. So, on top of that, what you see is if you came in two thousand, you see Patrick Ewing get tossed out the door, right? Then you see Marbury who came in, the prodigal son, all of that story, blah blah blah. Yeah, he leaves you. in this in disgrace. If you want to claim Linsanity, I don't care about it, but some people do, as I was reading on Twitter, claim he, you know, they got rid of him. And people get tight about that. I feel you, but CP, I, I, if I'm counting correctly in my mind, I don't know off the top of my head, I think the Nets also had five, sure. like the same listen, amount of winning listen, seasons the, the, the Knicks Nets had in have 10 had years. As, as much losing going on, as, as much bonehead moves, the whole KG Paul Pierce thing, they, they had to cover Sports Illustrated, and that was a shining light. They were never right. good. Never. They were never good. Billy King got sold a, a, a bag of a, a, a tires Word. In, in that regard. They had Jay-Z as the face, and then he left. <laughs> right. Even, <laughs> even Hove left. He was like, even I'm out. Even Hove left. He's like, I'm out about this yeah. life. <laughs> it's, 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 that's just, I, I mean, you know what? You, you have to rep for your team, I guess. You, even you if you have to lie. You got to rep for your team. Even if you have yeah. to lie. You know yeah. I mean? Mills Listen, and when, had when they had too. Jay Kidd and Kane, Kane Martin and, and RJ, give credit, they went to the finals back to back. They they had a nice little buzz going, but after that, nothing. it really wasn't nothing, man. Yeah, it it really wasn't nothing crazy. Nah. It, you know. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I just want to put this thing to bed, but it's gonna be hard to because they play right across the bridge, and we're always gonna be tied to their success and our success. Are always gonna be linked, just like. Mavs and Knicks, you know, KP success and our success. It's going to be forever linked as long as their tenures are in those respective places, bro. I understand. And also, KD is going to be doing a lot of media because he's not playing any ball. So it's going to be hard to not talk. hear all gonna, this it's, talk. It's going to be a lot of talk. During the season, it's like, yeah. oh, my God. Gosh. Facts, facts, facts. I mean, like I said, a lot of the kids, even the newer generation, like after our generation, a lot of those kids – they're not. They're very much team agnostic. Like they don't claim teams rather than they claim players. They're not raised right, CP. <laughs> <laughs> they're not raised right, CP. Right? A lot of the kids they follow players. They follow LeBron to mm -hmm. where he's going. They rock with Steph Curry because they love how he plays. Harden, the Greek freak. A lot of these, they don't necessarily rock with teams. They they rock more so with players. I feel you. you my child's I mean? not Knicks fan. He's out the family. He's not <laughs> <laughs> you just so nah, yeah, my son is already decked out. We're a split household, man. We. We split yeah, Lakers, yeah. Knicks, so we, we throw a little Lakers, you know, uh, Build-A-Bear in there and on top of the Knicks jerseys and, and whatnot. So <laughs> it, it is what it is. Uh, listen, we got to build our own stars, man. We got to build our own stars. Your boy RJ already claimed it. Yo, I'm a Nick. How RJ old is RJ? It, RJ's, uh, what is he, 18 or 19? Oh, he, oh is, is, he, is he a kid? 
Hey, I would say eighteen. He's playing. He play like a grown ass man. I yesterday. mean, he's grown ass. Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's bully balling people, but you know I mean eighteen. Last I checked, he, he he's uh he's barely he's that, barely. That's leaving. how it has to be, man. RJ's claiming it. Mitch is a dog. We'll see what Kev does. It's about our young core, bro. That's how we have to to grow. We have to grow our own. We gotta stop chasing the stars. It, it's funny because they they when they asked him about the Knicks hype, when Rosenberg asked him about the Knicks hype. He kind of played it off like, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Come on. I mean, it's like, I can't expect yeah, him to, I don't I can't expect him to tell the truth, I don't, man. I don't know. It's crazy. I can't expect him to tell the truth, man. <laughs> I can't expect him. I still believe that all of that nah, there, couldn't there have come some, out of there nowhere. There was some truth yo. to it, man. There had to have been some truth to that. There yo. was some truth to it. I, even if like he changed his mind yeah. somewhere around January, February, wherever, I'd still feel like there was some truth to it. There had to, to have been some truth to it. There's no way that the rumors would build up that strong to, to the point where players yeah. thought the same thing. Nah. The players were thinking the same thing. So, whatever, man. We yeah. moved on from it. It is what it is. Good luck to and him. There's no sour grapes over here anymore. I'm over it. I'm over it too, man. Let's build our own. Let's go, RJ. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, that's just it, man. We, we, we got Scott Perry here. We're doing the right thing right now. We got a whole bunch of development coaches here. He's going to yes, build sir. our players up from the ground up. And it's, it's, it's going to start to happen now. I'm very confident in that. That's what we're going to have to do, man. So on to the game. Uh, you know, we gave our takeaways last night. We heard from all the fans. It was definitely a good look, good mm-hmm. turnout last night. Yep. We went for about an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, took several phone calls. Uh, the Mook Morris. Mook! Era. <laughs> Mook set the tone early. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and, and a lot of people, well, first off, the news broke that he won't be serving a suspension hey. during the season, right? Because they all said that was a possibility that he could have gotten a suspension for it. But um, and then I had some people on my Twitter talking about, because listen, I, I was hyped when it happened. I posted the video like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's yeah. go we're back. People talking about, oh, you condone this behavior. And, condone. And people talking, oh, he's going to get suspended for doing that to the T. It's a lot of snow, snowflakey stuff nah. going on on Twitter, JL. So, <laughs> some days I, I can't take it, bro. I can't take the snowflakery, man. You're a bad example for yeah, our children. Yeah, it's like, listen, no, I'm not, I'm not condoning him throwing the ball in my man's face. But like he said, he himself said it. It was unprofessional. Right. I got a little carried away. He knows. But he said, like I said, we're not taking no shit. Nope. It is what it is. That's the mentality we need to be playing with, bro. I, I agree with and you. And that needs to, to, to sprinkle down to the young core. That's the mentality. Dogs, bro. And I feel like it's going to happen, man. Because, listen, Marcus Morris got into it with Mitch Robinson last season. And RJ ain't no pushover. Bobby Porter. Oh, he's ain't both no of them. Marquise and, and oh, Mark. oh yeah, both yeah. He got both of them, him. man. He's gonna catch yeah. both. It's like they transferred to be from mm-hmm, one state to mm-hmm. another. <laughs> but that's the size of the point. Like we have some guys here who I feel like are gonna stand up to certain people. Like DSJ is another one, man. DSJ. D- DSJ. I still remember last season. We yeah. went to the game in, with the ball. Against the Clippers. Against, no, 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 Detroit, Detroit. No, 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 no. Knicks Sorry. versus Dallas before yeah, DSJ Dallas. was yeah, even yeah, traded yeah. here. DSJ and Frank were boys, as last I heard. Facts. Frank played defense on DSJ. DSJ got frustrated, shoved Frank to yeah, the he was floor. Tight. He, he didn't like it. <laughs> he didn't uh, yeah. like it. I seen DSJ try to check Kyrie his, his rookie year yeah. two years ago. We saw him throw with Blake Griffin. Yeah. We saw him get into a Ben Simmons. Like, I'm DSA's just, a hothead, boy. I mean, we got a couple of goons on the, yeah, on the yeah. squad. Iso. I'm just, Iso. Iso's not backing down. You nope. know, Mitch ain't backing down. Nope. Do you know? So It's turning around, man. The tide is turning. We're going to have the tough-minded players that, here, Yo, that's man. the mentality we need to have, yeah. man. So it's not, I'm not, I'm not condoning them doing, being dirty and, and, and getting ejected out the game to cost their team. No. Nah. I don't think Morris, he, he'll be all right, man. He'll be he fine. knew the magnitude of the situation. It's a preseason game. Yeah. My man was trying to get back to Philly, you know, early week. <laughs> we got another game Friday. He wanted to get home, jump on the I-9-5 uh. back to Philly. <laughs> you know, it's, it's simple and plain. People just got to stop being so sensitive. But like I said, that's the mentality we, we need to have. So then I wake up this morning now, mm. and I'm, I'm – you know, check checking the gram, checking Twitter, and, and the aftermath that was, and I see Oak on Twitter Man. post something that said to 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 the degree of the '90s Knicks. Oh, oh, they can't be the '90s Knicks without Oak and Mace. R.I.P. 
And then he says so funny or something like that. Or real funny, right? Yeah, I don't understand it. Yo, I just feel sometimes like I love Oakley. Like he's always going to have a special place in my heart because yeah. he was part of that 90s rough Knicks. And he brought that that bully ball mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to the Knicks in the first place with Mason. And but, Facts. but Yo, oh, can you let us be great though, man? Like, can you? Come on, man. Can you? It's sour grape shell. Yo, I I feel like he's like that old relative uncle who just be saying stuff, and you love him, yeah. and you want to say something, but you know you can't get it's, through with him because it's, it's he's enough. just setting his way. I had man. enough, man. I had enough. When the when the when the whole thing went down at the garden and it first happened, I was in Oakley's corner the whole time. I was tight. This was embarrassing. How could this happen to one of our heroes? You throw him out like that. He get into a scuffle of security. Like, it should have never even went down like that. Right. And then slowly it's digs at Dolan, digs at cool. You know what I mean? I'm I'm not I'm not a Dolan fan. I'm not on the other side where it's just like sell the team, sell the team. It right. is what it is. It's his team. And that's not gonna happen. Then it it, it became digs at the team and how they were running the team. Then it became, oh, free agents need to go to the Nets, right? Yeah. Then it became, oh, KD, that's my guy, that's my guy. And it just, and then it's showing up at the Nets game, yeah. being courtside, and the Nets presenting them to the fans. I see, you know, yeah, obviously it's... the Curry favor. There's been a lot of that going on over the last two years that kind of got under my skin. You know what I mean? I understand, man. And, and so to the point now, it's like, He's pushed aside the beef with Dolan and now taking it to players that wear the same color uniform that he wore. I don't understand. That's paying homage. They're paying homage to that. That man. is definitely what it is, man. It's homage. So I don't understand how you can take shots at a team. <laughs> you taking shots at a yeah, your old team. At your team. Not forget the owner. Yes. This is a player that's paying homage to how you, you. play. To and, how you play. And trying to bring it back. This is a good thing. So. So you're telling me he shouldn't try to bring the 90s Knicks back? Uh, he yeah. shouldn't try to bring back the Enforcer? I think that's a good thing, Oh, I, I wasn't feeling that, man. It's just, at this point now, it's just sour grapes, bro. You're, you... It's just sour grapes. So I, I reposted, I said, Brooklyn Nets own Charles Oakley, folks. Oh, whoa, man, you went all the way in. I had to, man. I, I had in. enough, Jay Ellis. I had I enough, feel... man. I can't go that far, yo. I can't. Yeah. We got to try to get him on the show. So that's as far as I'm going to go, because you know what I mean? He might I might get blackballed. I feel, oh, yeah. yeah. If we get him on the show, we definitely... We yeah, if we, we get him on the show, we forget it. Black forget ball. it. We're not allowed back in MSG, man. I'm treading, I've been treading lightly on that. A lot of people have been asking, like, yo, try to get Oak. I mean, whatever, man. Let's just go for it. What are you thinking? Yo, I'm all, I'm, yo, I'm all about the truth. All right, sleep on it. Sleep on it and let me know, man. No, sleep I'm not, not sleeping. I'm, I'm going. <laughs> I'm we need the it. truth. I'm for it. We, we, need to get Oak, it. we need to get Oak under the spotlight, I'm, man. Yeah, I'm for it. I'm, I'm on the side yeah. of the truth. And and the story, man. If the yeah. Knicks hate, I would love to work with the Knicks at MSG. But that if they hate it because of that, then it is what it is. It we is did what, what we have to do. Man. This is for the fans, by the this fans. This is for the fans, by the fans. You know you have a, yeah, that. you have a responsibility to the fans. <laughs> That's, it, <man. laughs> That's it. So, like I said, with the with the Morris thing, and he played well. Let's take it to that. Oh, Seventeen a points in in a half. Yo, he was hot. Oh yeah, my man was hitting from all three levels. Looked mm-hmm. very comfortable out there. Yeah, you want to argue maybe he held on onto the ball too long. I'm not crazy about it. I thought the ball movement over, overall in that game was, was pretty solid. Yeah, 25, 25 yeah. assists for the game, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and we'll get to that to the next topic about the lineup, but if you're going to be relying on Julius, somebody's going to have to step up as that secondary scoring option on that on that line. Oh, yeah. And you see what Marcus and, and Julius, maybe they're going to have to shoulder the load, especially in the beginning, while if RJ's going to be still be as a starter – while he gets up to speed. Yeah, in general, you kind of need, for like a competent NBA team in general, you need two scorers yeah. on the floor at all times, at Facts. least. And at least somebody else who can make a play or, or, or make an who open jump for their own. It, That's what we talked about on the show, too. Mm-hmm. You usually, just need, usually need two of those. Yeah. And if Marcus Morris can do that, then, man, do your thing. You know, he didn't have the chance to do that when he was on the Celtics. He came on uh, the Knicks. I've seen him... Actually, interview and say he felt like he can do more. Yeah, I saw, um, yeah, during the game, yesterday, mm-hmm. I saw that. Yeah, he can do more at the Knicks than he did with the Celtics, and mm-hmm. he'll have every opportunity to do that. I, mean, I honestly, I know you were thinking this. I'm thinking DSJ might be that person too. 
that's a possibility because we was yeah. all hoping that he would take the next step. And we, he, we were hoping that, but now we're hearing that uh, Alfred mm, Payton, yeah, it, it could be sliding into the starting lineup permanently Listen. or to, to start the <laughs> season. Uh, Ian Begley, shout out Ian Begley, was a guest on the show. Yeah. Dap me up on that. We I had him as a guest. Yep. Yeah, he was on our show. Mm-hmm. Um, he's saying that that Alfred is playing, according to sources, sources is playing his way into the starting lineup because we thought that the only reason he was in to start this game, this first preseason game, was based on the DSJ injury. Right. But maybe that wasn't so much the case. What do you think? I mean, listen, I've always said, do not be surprised if Alfred Payton starts. He's no slouch. There's no mm. way you can have five triple doubles in a row and be a slouch. That's yeah. just, you just you just can't. Like, that's not. That's fair. That's, that's, that's fair. That's like historic numbers. He's in he's in the record books with Oscar Robinson and other greats. So the dude to pull that off, and he sets people up, and he plays defense. Like he only has to work on his jump shot, and yeah. that's really the only real deficit, you know, shortcoming he has. So mm-hmm. I'm not surprised that he's in the running. Now, will he start? Um, who knows? In all actuality, it might be best case scenario for DSJ to take the spot because of the optics of it. Because we right. got him. In the, KP the, trade. the KP trade, the KP trade, and it would make us look good if we was able to take somebody from the KP trade, develop him, and turn him into a starting point right. guard, all star right. caliber point guard. But you keep what you kill. Yeah, that's that fits. It's serious about it, man. It's <clears throat> serious about it. And I thought his comments on DSJ earlier last week in training camp, when uh, I think it was Begley at Berman asking what they thought about, uh, sorry, what he thought about Alfred in training mm-hmm. camp. And they were like, what's the one word you would use to describe Alfred? And, and Fizz said intense. Yeah. I said, oh, shit. I said, that means, that means Alfred is balling in training mm-hmm. camp right now. He said intense. And so, like I said, I ne- I don't, I'm not doubting his prowess as a floor general. We know that. The five yeah. triple doubles, you got to respect it. He's always been a solid uh, caretaker with the ball, a solid floor general to have as an option. My whole thing was, it, and it wasn't even based off of logic. It was more based off of, aspirations for DSJ. Right. Especially coming off of the, the KP trade. Right. Being a lottery pick and with the potential that he has. I mean, let's face it. I mean, he has that potential to be a very dynamic point guard in this league. So yeah, it's just my hope that if DSJ can take that next step right. with the Randall in the lineup and maybe with the Archer, you know, we can maybe defy expectations a little bit, especially this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because in reality, you know, he has a higher ceiling too. You'd think somebody with that much athletic potential, yeah. if he puts it all together, he'll be unstoppable. And that's what a lot of people saw. That's why LeBron was tight. Oh, why the niggas didn't – like – People yeah. see that in him, so I understand that. And I feel like the fans kind of feel that, too. And why, just why this is weird Alfred Payton right. kind of hate right. with him even being mentioned as a possibility of starting. Yeah. Because I, I, <laughs> thought, I thought him being here is going to block us from really knowing what we're going to get with DSJ and with Frank. Yeah. That's my my take, and you know I've been saying it for a while. I thought I, that's that's why I didn't like that pickup. It wasn't because yeah. he can't play the position. That's right, because he can play it fairly well. But it's because we already have two lottery picks on the on this depth chart that we still need to see who they are gonna be down the road. I I, I mean I said the same thing on the show too, but I mean. Scott Perry's position is he likes competition and he feels like competition is going to yeah. step people's game up. So hopefully he he stays true to that. I know I'm a competitive guy on the basketball court anyway. Or, or, and I'm not even like a professional. I'm just like, you know, yeah. YMCA do once a week, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully <laughs> the competition does, you know, um, you know, elevate everybody's play for sure. Yeah, man. So exactly. So that might happen. I, if I can get competitive on some YMCA dude, because, oh, this guy's a point guard. and I got to step my game up because he lit me up last game. I, I, you have to think if somebody's letting, lighting you up in practice, it can step your game up too. Yeah, so, sound like, and, and what did he say in the quote? He said that uh, friends of players on the team, right, said that? Mm-hmm. That he was playing his way into the lineup. Yeah. Friends of players on the team. Friends of players on yeah. the team. So it's like the players are playing yeah. 
and the players are telling <laughs> their friends. It's like my mains, Yo, mains, mains. Peyton yeah. ate up, la, 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 yeah, la. Yeah. He hit me with this assist. It was yeah. nice. I hope Fizz take him because he's balling right now. Mm. It's interesting. I mean, listen, I, I think we're going to see a lot of lineup variations Definitely. before this preseason is over. We got three more games left, one mm-hmm. coming up on Friday against the same Wizards team in, at MSG. We're going to see different lineups. There, there's no doubt about it. And we'll see what sticks, you know. Yeah. I and think this, the, the Peyton news is pretty much It's interesting, but I, think, I still think it's premature. It is premature, and I also say this. I also saw another interview that talked about DSJ, and um, Fizdale also mentioned that DSJ had a few games where he took over, like so. Which is which? We'll see. Yeah. Well, is the is the takeover more than the floor general? Was right. the, what do you value more, the points or the floor general? Right, it'll right. be named to be seen how this puts it together. I do. I do think that Peyton, from a balance standpoint, you could argue. It's the, if you're going to keep RJ in there at the two, then maybe Peyton is a, a better fit than DSJ because you may think that DSJ and Randall will consume, and, and now with Morris, right. maybe they eat up, eat up, you know, dominate the ball so much that it, it, it renders RJ a bit ineffective. Exactly. I mean, you know, and shout out to the Frank fans. That was the Frank fans um, uh, argument, too. Yeah. And Frank and, and Peyton are kind of similar in that way. Like, right. Peyton might be like a little bit more polished version of Frank. I, th- I think Peyton is a more polished version. Right. Of Frank. I think he is a more polished version of Frank, for with, sure. With Frank, with Frank having more potential because of his length and size, both. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, so um, yeah. We'll see, man. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> it's definitely gonna be interesting. Salute to everybody on Instagram right now. Yep. Shoot us some questions, man. We were just shooting some behind the scenes. I, Ari's in here. Uh, Ari's definitely in of here. Of course, of course, of course. JL says the camera's on you, man. Say what up to Ari, bro. Yo, what's going on, Ari, man? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, Natty Solo, this is this is going to be on YouTube. We're shooting for YouTube right now. Uh, just want to weigh in on a couple things. So we just touched on the Marcus Morris um, situation, the Oakley comments, the KD comments, and, and, and Alfred Payton. Sliding into the starting lineup potentially, man. What do, what do you guys think about it? Ari says ISO needs burn. Ari <laughs> just sent me a DM, and he said uh, he showed me a, 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 a picture of ISO liking one of his comments. Yeah, I was like, he, he you showed say? me that same thing. Yeah, he sent me that too. ISO yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a message last night talking about I hope the reason you didn't get that much minutes last night from Fizz was, was because uh, he wanted to see some other players because you definitely deserve 25 minutes a night. I mean, listen, that could very well be true because we have a lot of people in the backcourt to see. We have Wayne Ellington we have to kind of work out. Uh, yeah. Frank Nilakina, uh his option – they want to try to see if they can pick up his 31st. option on October 31st. October so he, 31st. we actually have to look at him to see if he's progressed and this yeah. translates to NBA level. And then, uh, so we, we have a lot of things to kind of consider. We kind of know what ISO is going to give you. Um, even though, you know what, I have to admit that open practice, he showed us something else a little bit. He, he, he's he, highly efficient mm-hmm. with, his, with his scoring. Mm-hmm. Highly efficient with his scoring in terms of his moves. Right, exactly. But, you know... It, because we have so many shooting guards, it's, it's time to kind of look at it. And you know, RJ Barrett, we gotta we gotta look at him, get him the minutes too. Somebody not gonna be happy, bro. Oh, we know that. Somebody, I think it's gonna be Dot because he's gonna be he's gonna be starting off behind the eight ball. I'm worried about Dot, man. I th- I think it's gonna be Dotson. Man. I think it's gonna be Dotson too, man. That's a, my only Nick that follow me is gonna be Dot. No, <laughs> no. I, I think he. No. He, you know, I think yeah. I, I don't know about, about yeah, Dotson man, man. because it, it's like if you're gonna be getting the three balls from somebody else, from Ellington, from ISO, maybe from RJ, and you're gonna be you could get your defense from a Frank, yeah. maybe even an RJ, then it, Dot becomes kind of redundant. I think. Yeah, like the only thing, my only argument for Dot is okay. You have Frank, and you have Trier. And then you have Wayne. I feel like Dotson could be like Wayne Ellington with defense. <laughs> Cause I, I, I don't know if he could be as much of a sharpshooter though. Though I, I mean, I don't. His release is ridiculously yeah, quick. It is like that's one thing that turn and release where he doesn't really look at the rim, but it, yeah, it's ridiculously yeah. quick. But I know Dot is working to do He's something like that because mm-hmm. he he always he talks about how he kind of studies. Um, um, yo, I'm a brain fart right now. Dude from Golden State. Clay. Clay. He studies Clay Thompson, how he doesn't take a lot of dribbles and he pulls up and shoots. He studies a lot of his game with Clay Thompson. So mm-hmm. I know that's what he's going to. So even a guy like Ellington could probably help Dot seeing him how he works firsthand yeah. and, and gets his routine in. But 
Ellington didn't play in Miami because of his defense. Right. So we'll see what happens with the Knicks. We sorely need the shooting, so that might be overlooked. We need the shooting. Yeah. We, we need the shooting. Mm -hmm. So Michael Eva says, do you want uh, RJ at the point? I wouldn't say so yet. Mm -hmm. But I, I like what I see yeah, yeah. with him as, as kind of a playmaker. But whether he's at the one or the two, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference, to be honest with Keep you. Keep it the way it is. Like, the way Fizdale is running his offense, or it's just like if you get the rebound. Push. Push. And push and create. Exactly. So it's just keep it like that. Keep mm -hmm. it simple. RJ gets the rebound, you the point guard. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You've seen that because Julius can do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kev, eh, he's working Kinda, on it. Yeah. Kev is working on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's he's going to run like a gazelle and go straight to the basket. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, and then your guards are doing it. Frank was pushing the pace up a little bit more, yeah. uh, last night. And, um, Alfred was doing the same thing, and, mm -hmm. and RJ could do it. So if you can have that type of versatility, you're in, you're in good shape. Definitely. I, I think you're in good shape. Dark Matter RA says, can DSJ be a bench player? See, so that's going to be a key question. He wasn't no. feeling that in, in Dallas for a second nope. with, with the whole Luka thing. He wasn't feeling it. I mean, my my instinct says no. and But I'll also say that you would hope that Fizdale has his ear. He respects Fizdale a lot. He said that in the beginning of the season. That he's the type of coach who, who tells it how it is, mm -hmm. and that's what he loved about Fisdale. So you would hope that if he has to come off the bench, that he still keeps that same respect for Fizz and he yeah. doesn't out, kind of act out like what happened in Dallas. Right, right. Well, listen, you have an opportunity on a, on a second unit to have a nice unit. I mean, if you're going, what if you go, DSJ, ISO, maybe Frank at the three. Mm -hmm. Kev at the four. Yeah. And you go Taj at the five. Yeah. Not bad. I like I like Taj. And we even see Portis. I like Taj, yet, man. man. I don't know, man. Whatever, Portis, man. I don't, I don't know. We you need know? we need Taj, man. I'm telling you, we need Taj, bro. You know, you know what it is? <clears throat> the three point shooting. Yeah. Because But if Taj is knocking him down, if like Taj that, is then, knocking him down. Hey, that he's he's trying to he's trying to survive. <laughs> Taj is trying to survive in that lineup, that, boy. That Brooklyn, he said, like, "You want me to shoot threes? Okay, why not? Call me coach. Word. You look at the stats yesterday. I'm looking at like, wait, wait, how many he shot? Like yeah. four or five? Shot fifty percent. Taj told coach, hit him on points. the hip. Oh, Portis hey, is call out. Call me. Call his number. Jeez. So Taj, Taj is out. <laughs> he's trying to survive, man. He's trying to stay in that rotation. Like I say, you're gonna need his defense because yeah. Mitch is still a question mark. Not because he can't play defense, like I said, but from a discipline and durability. Mm -hmm. Discipline and durability is for Mitch. And also with Mitch, he's got he's to gotta work on a high percentage shot. Yeah. Because they're going cra to crash on him for those lobs and take those lobs away, just like they did with Capella yeah. in the playoff. That's oh, how yeah. he neutralized Capella. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they're going to have to work with me. It's a work in progress. It you is. know Mitch is still a project on the offense. Yeah, yeah. He, you know what I mean? He took one jumper yesterday. He did and take a so, mid-range yeah, jumper. I was like, that okay, you got yeah, one. He did take a mid-range yeah, jumper. Finally, so. There was the times. There was a couple of times he's open from the three at the top of the key. I'm like, shoot yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> shoot it, Mitch. Mitch, please shoot it. Yeah, when, he, when he took that little 15 footer, I was like, I had to like rub my eyes a little bit, bro. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You but. missed the joke. Mitch, please shoot it. No, oh, I didn't, I didn't hear it. Man. I didn't hear it. Man. Yo, oh, even my <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear that, man. But shout oh, out to man. Mitch. Don't double on Tondra. Don't even ask. Me have, <laughs> <laughs> All right, YouTube, that was a wrap up for today's show. Let us know what you think about uh, those topics in the comment section below. What do you think about the Oakley comments, the KD comments? What's your thoughts on Alfred Payton potentially being the starting point guard? Leave it in the comment section and we'll reply back and, and see you there, man. Peace.